Science rules. What do Bill Nye the Science Guy and this character from Monty Python and the Holy Grail have in common? The scientific method. They use it, and I bet so do you. It's a process to finding possible answers to questions. Here's the process. Now, we usually don't think about every little step that we go through when we identify a problem and try to solve it, but this is the breakdown of each one of those steps. First, observe. Next, ask a question. Then, identify the variables that make up that question. Use those variables to make a prediction, also known as a hypothesis. Test that prediction with an experiment. Collect and analyze the data from the experiment. Analyze it to find out if your data supports the hypothesis, your prediction, or does not support your hypothesis or prediction. Full-time researchers, problem solvers, and scientists will repeat the research experiment process if they find out that the results do not support their hypothesis. They'll change their hypothesis to find a potential different solution to their problem. For our cases, we're going to repeat, we're going to skip the repeat step, skip it, no. and get right to the final step, which is reporting our results and conclusions. Now, let's go into one of these steps with some detail and with some examples. Making observations. So gathering information. Gather information from the world around you or from something you read in articles. Examples. Um, we've seen with the Atkins diet that they focus on a lot of high protein consumption. Also, you might see that a lot of um, carb products now have protein added to them. We know that people eat eggs for breakfast in a lot of different ways and also breakfast meats, also very high in protein. And we've all seen advertisements like for the Snickers bar or Cliff bars or any sort of protein shake that protein fills you up longer. Well, using that information we conducted from our observation, now we're going to generate a very specific question. The experiment will be conducted to look for possible solutions to this question. Our question is, will eating more protein in the morning extend the amount of time until I'm hungry? Now let's break that down. What are our variables? Variables are factors, traits, or conditions that can exist in differing amounts or types. They're measurable. So at our question, will eating more protein in the morning extend the amount of time until I'm hungry? Our measurable variables are amount of protein and amount of time that passes until one feels hungry. Those variables will fit into one of three different categories. There are three different types of variables independent variables, dependent variables, and controls. Independent variables are what's being changed by the experimenter. So in our example, that would be the amount of protein. The dependent variable is the outcome. It's the measurable change that happens as a result of the change to the independent variable. So if we change the amount of protein one consumes, that's going to change the amount of time one goes through until feeling hungry. Control variables are things that must remain the same throughout the experiment. So in this case, that could be other foods consumed with the proteins, the activities during that day, the time of day that the protein was um, consumed, etc. Next, we're going to build a clear prediction about the relationship between the variables. The, one way to do this is to put it into an if-then sentence structure. Some people find this a bit confusing. 
and it's not something that you have to do. Here are two examples to show you how to make these um, hypotheses, the prediction. In our examples, the independent variable is in orange and the dependent variable is in purple. So example one, if more protein is consumed in the morning, then more time will pass until hunger is felt. Example two, the more protein consumed in the morning, the more time will pass until feeling hungry. Both of them clearly identify a predicted relationship between protein and time. Now it's time to build our experiment. We're going to need participants, procedures, a way to collect data, analyzing the data, and drawing our conclusions. Finding participants. Do not use yourselves because you kind of know what you what outcome you want to get from doing your experiment so you have some bias you can use your family friends other buck students or when appropriate you can even ask strangers to participate just make sure you get permission from all of your participants before starting the experiment also it's really helpful to collect basic demographic information about your participants this is information like age, gender, where they live, etc. You can use this information to possibly explain the results that you get. With our protein example, let's say we have an 8-year-old in our experiment and an elderly 80-year-old person in our, in our experiment. Well, if we're collecting information on the amount of time that passes until they feel hungry, we're probably going to get that eight-year-old feeling hungrier in a shorter amount of time than the elderly 80-year-old just because they have different metabolisms. So those are things to keep in mind when you do your experiment. Next, your procedures. This is the step-by-step -step process in completing your experiment somebody reading your procedures should be able to recreate the experiment. Here's an example. Um, and in this example, the words in green are the control variables and the words in orange are your independent variables. On Monday at 8 a.m., participant one consumed 12 grams of protein, about two eggs for breakfast. They had one piece of toast, eight ounces of orange juice. Also, on Monday at 8 a.m., participant two consumed zero grams of protein, zero eggs for breakfast. They had one piece of toast and eight ounces of orange juice. So you can see in that procedure, the only thing that was different between participant one and participant two was the amount of protein they consumed, our independent variable. We changed it. We had one participant eat two eggs and another eat zero. Ideally, that independent variable should be the only thing that you change in each trial of your experiment. Of course, that is incredibly difficult or close to impossible to do. But when you analyze your results, you want to think about any other differences that might have occurred while doing your experiment that might have impacted the results that you got. So getting more into our data and data analysis. One of the easier ways to collect data is just to make a simple spreadsheet. In our example, you could list the participant groups. So you have participants who eat zero grams of protein and participants who eat 12 grams of protein. And then for each of those participants, write down the amount of time that passed until they felt hungry. Then you can find the average amount of time that passed until they felt hungry for each participant group. So for example, you would find that two hours passed until they felt hungry in that group that ate zero grams of protein. And you had an average of four hours pass until they felt hungry for the group that ate 12 grams of protein. 
we're not going to get into any sort of higher level statistical analysis for this class. Use your data to write your conclusion. First, you're going to state whether or not the data supported the hypothesis. Let's say in our example, the data does support the hypothesis. The protein consumed in the, the more protein consumed in the morning, the more time passed until someone felt hungry. And then we summarize our data analysis. So again, what I was saying before, we write down um, the averages. Low protein eaters, those who consume zero grams, had an average of two hours passed until feeling hungry. High protein eaters, those that consume 12 grams of protein, had an average of four hours passed until feeling hungry. You can keep your sentences really simple in that section because you just want to clearly report the data that you got. Then explain why you think you got those results. And keep in mind all of those things we talked about before. Did the characteristics of your participants influence what you got? Were there differences in each of the trials of the experiment that might have impacted your results? Also, use information from articles and books that you find in the Bucks Library to help explain your findings. So let's go back to our graphic here. You can see that we went through all of these steps. We observed the role of proteins in advertising and our day-to-day -day eating habits. We asked the question about um, protein and feeling hungry. We identified our variables, amount of protein, and time passed until feeling hungry. We made a prediction. If people eat more protein, then more time will pass until they feel hungry. We tested it with an experiment. We had two different groups of people. One group ate zero protein, another group ate 12, and we collected their data and analyzed it. And we found that our results did support our hypothesis. Those who ate more protein did in fact go a longer time without feeling hungry. And we reported that all with our results and conclusions. You will be doing this process throughout the first third of the course. There's more information on this page, um, a little more facts from Bill Nye and Monty Python. Remember, both of them love the scientific method, so you can learn from them. You'll also have a quiz on the scientific method. You will need to get an 8 out of 10 to get access to the remaining course materials. It's open note, but you can only take the quiz once. All projects in this first third of the course require you to use the scientific method. And this is an INTG course objective. It's a really helpful problem-solving process that you can use in any situation.